Hello and welcome to another video here at Pragmatic Works. In this series, I want to talk to you about a lot of the powerful capabilities that are built in to the Power Query Editor inside of Power BI that maybe you didn't know was there. And so in this video, I want to talk to you about how we can take data that's inside of a single row and split it into multiple rows. You've split data into columns before, but I want to show you how to split it into rows. So stay tuned. All right, so for this example, I have a quick little demo that I've set up. I've kept it very simple with the data that we have, and I'm going to show you two different ways to actually solve this problem. The first one is gonna be straight through the UI, and we're also gonna talk about special characters and how they can affect our code as well. And the second one that I'm going to actually highlight and show is actually gonna be a little bit more code driven. But starting to learn the code here is very important. So let's jump right in. So what we have here is a very basic example, and I actually come across this quite a lot with all the customers that we help and work with and train. I see this kind of example a lot. And so I have a transaction that has occurred, and inside of this transaction, we have two salespeople, but instead of putting them on a separate row, we just kind of smash them into the same row. And I wanna have one row per salesperson per transaction, right? That's my goal, that's what I'm going for. and so. The way we would normally tackle this is we would generally come in here and right click on the salesperson table, right? So I would come in and right click on it. And then I would tell it, hey, I wanna split column here by delimiter. And so I'd say split column by delimiter and we'll get this nice little pop-up box here, right? Now by default, it's picking up a semicolon, but you can see that's not quite right. There's something else going on in here. It's on the next line. And so what I actually want to do is I want to change this to custom. And custom is going to give me the ability of picking up those like hidden characters that we don't see right now, which is actually a line feed. All right, so when somebody was entering this in in their Excel document, they hit that enter button and there's an extra character in there that we need to take care of. So I'm going to hit custom. And I'm gonna type in the semicolon here, so that part is good. And I know the, the, the code here for carriage return and line feed and those things because I do this quite often, right? But if you don't know the code, that's okay because guess what? What you can do is come down here and say split using special characters. And then you can come in here and you can actually insert the line feed. So you'll notice you have tab and carriage return, line feed, carriage return and line feed, even a non-breaking space, all of those there. And I'm gonna click on line feed here and it's gonna type that in there. So now I have both the semicolon and I have the line feed. Now you say, Mitchell, I didn't, how did you know that was there? I, I, I wouldn't have known that was there. That might actually be a separate video that I probably should do to be honest with you because for years I've always used Notepad++ and I would take that file and I would actually open it up in a tool like Notepad++, which is a free tool that you can download and I would view hidden characters or view special characters. I forget the exact terminology and it would have shown it to me. I would see those characters and I would know that's a problem. That's how I've, for many years, helped me to identify what the problem with my data was. But that's how I would do it if I didn't know, or you can guess, you could take a shot at it and see if you get it. But that's that right there. So now I could click okay. But remember, by default, what does it do? It splits it into columns. Well, I don't wanna have one row with two columns, I wanna have to call our two rows with one column, that's my goal. So what I'm gonna do is actually click right here on advanced options. Now, that's part of what I'm gonna do in this series is we're gonna be clicking those buttons that maybe you don't normally click so you can see some of those additional options that exist right here inside of Power Query. So I'm gonna click on advanced options, I'm super excited. And I'm gonna tell it instead of splitting into columns, let's split it into rows. There we go. This is perfect. I've had to do this so many times for customers. I was working with somebody with medical equipment and they had rows coming in and they had reasons and they were all smashed together, but we really needed one row per reason for that table that we were putting together. And this is how we did it. We just clicked this button right here. So now I can go ahead and click that okay button right there, meaning everything's okay. We'll zoom back out and this looks really good, right? This looks really good. We got two separate rows now. There is a problem potentially in the future we got to deal with, which is I don't want to do a sum across that because now I'm duplicating that data. And how you deal with that, well, there's a multitude of ways to do it. You could try to do it here inside of uh, 
Power Query. You could do it in your DAX calculations later when you build your measures. Depends on how much data you have and where you want to handle that. Not going to take care of that or handle that in this video. Just be aware that if this were a transactional table, a fact table, where you have those aggregate amounts, when you split into rows, you will have some duplicate data you need to deal with. That's important to keep in mind, okay? So um, that's the first thing I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you how to do this through the UI, super clean, super fast. Now I'm gonna spend probably less than a minute showing you the code of how you could do this with code as well. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of these steps. I'm just gonna delete these steps real quick. That should put us back where we were. Um, that's perfect. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna say, all right, I wanna add a custom column, okay? So anytime you wanna write Elm code yourself, you wanna write Power Query code, you're going to start with a custom column. And then I'm gonna come in here and there's actually, so here's a, here's a trick for you if you don't know this. There is a massive amount of capability built into the Power Query editor here that's not available through the UI that you can get through the code. So starting to learn the code and picking up tips is important. So I won't, I won't talk about that too much, but it is important. So I'm gonna do text.split, right? And I'm even gonna zoom in here. So I'm gonna do a text.split operation here. And the text that I wanna split is gonna be that column salesperson. Now, just to be very clear, you see that the salesperson, I went back to the previous step. So this is pre what we did before. And now I'm gonna put a comma in here and I'm gonna tell it that I wanna split by the uh, semicolon and the line feed. So I'm gonna type in the semicolon first, but now I have to type in the line feed and I'm gonna do double quote, open parenthesis, LF, double quote. The Power Query language is case sensitive. If I do an uppercase F or a lowercase F or, you know, or, or, you know if I do the opposite of the exact casing, it will not work. So that's one of the frustrations of working with this is you really do gotta know exactly what you're trying to accomplish when you start getting into the code like this. If all works well, what this should do is create a new column that's gonna have a list and then we can expand the list. So that might be a new tip to you too. So let's do this. We're gonna click OK. And when I click OK, assuming that I put the delimiter in here correctly, when I click on the list, down here at the very bottom, and my editor will zoom in on that for you, but down at the very bottom, you see we have that list right there. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. So now I can get rid of that original column. I can remove that. And then I can just click this little expand button right here and tell it, hey, expand it to new rows. You expand it to new rows and we're right back to where we started a moment ago. Perfect using the code right there inside of Elm. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button because I'm gonna be dropping a lot of videos just like this one that's going to give you just some quick insights into quick tips and tricks inside the Power Query Editor that maybe you're not aware of. All right, thank you and we'll see you in the next video.